Hello, thank you for joining us once again. My name is Chris from ACI Aquaculture. Uh, we are doing a segment on rock anemones. Rock anemones are and have become a very highly sought after uh, anemone for aquariums. They pop under LEDs, very easy to take care of, and do extremely well in pretty much any environment that you can give them, from dirty water aquariums to super clean water aquariums. They are just something you have to watch with them. They like to eat fish. Anything that's small enough that they can catch, they will eat it. Other than that, something you can enjoy the beauty of in your aquarium. They usually stay put once they become attached to a rock. Again, they're rock anemones for a reason. They live on rocks and on the reef itself. So it's not something that you just want to give a sand substrate to, to, to attach to. Uh, they will burrow all the way down underneath the sand and attach to your glass and extend themselves so that they are visible through the sand. It's not necessarily the best environment for them. If you can put them on a small rock and put them in an aquarium where they are happy, they will usually stay there. Rock anemones are very similar to pretty much every other anemone. Uh, something you gotta look for when you're purchasing a rock anemone is that its foot is intact and doesn't have stringy intestinal looking uh, filaments coming off the base. If, that, if you see that when it was pulled from the aquarium, you know the foot has a tear in it. If the foot has a tear in it, depending on how bad the tear is, it will die. If it's not really bad, they can repair themselves and recuperate and thrive in your aquarium. The rock anemones are very aggressive anemones. They, uh, fortunately, my hands over the years have become very, very uh, prone to being stung by pretty much any stinging, long, flowy, polypy coral or anemone. Uh, rock anemones are one of my worst. They, uh, they tend to sting my thumbs and my index finger fairly, fairly bad but um, it's something you get past when you enjoy and love these animals so much. We have, uh, at the moment, probably five or 600 of them in stock. Uh, we have this one rock that just happened to accumulate on its own. They're absolutely gorgeous. The rock is absolutely gorgeous. But again, as you can see, they accumulate to the rock and they, they like to be in cracks and crevices. And as long as you can get that anemone from an environment that was healthy and the store owner or the employee actually removes it from the substrate that it's attached to without tearing the foot, you should have no issues at all keeping a rock anemone in your aquarium. They don't require heavy light. They usually come from fairly deep water and grass beds, so the grass beds are flowing over top of them and they might not be getting a lot of light. Uh, they are going to need to be fed to keep them happy. Uh, light is something, they are, a, they are zoosynthalic, but feeding them will also keep them in very intense and the brightly colored rainbows and ultras that we receive are usually fairly small. We get uh, from an area where we get some fairly large ones, they're like this big, but that's very few and far between. We feed them in here, uh, we put calanus in from, from mice, PE mysis. Um, we also put in uh, mice shrimp, brine shrimp, and believe it or not, they capture the otohemi pellets and they pull them into their system. Uh, I've known people to have the, the small ultras turn into fairly large rock anemones over time being fed. If they're not fed, they'll probably stay fairly small. Uh, again, they can and will eat anything that their tentacles can grab a hold of. If you have small fish in your aquarium and at night they're sleeping and they don't know what they're doing, they're disoriented, moving around the aquarium, chromis, damsels, small gobies, it's a possibility that they might get nabbed up by one of these guys. But that's the chance we all take every time we put any animal in our aquarium. It's nature at its best. We don't like to see anybody or as a personal, we don't, we don't like to see people lose that animal, but nature is what nature is, and we love these aquariums and these animals because of nature and what it is. So when you put them in your aquarium, it's kind of a, can be a risky thing, depending on the fish that you have in your aquarium. But again, in most cases, you don't have to worry about that, because a lot of the fish are you know, larger and not gonna be able to be ingested by a, a small rock anemone. When you get to the larger ones, which we have, large numbers of what we call the common. 
Uh, they are about three to four inches when they're open. The difference between the small ones and the large ones, one of the things is the small ones are very, very, very desirable by almost all hobbyists, especially if you have, you know, our, you know, the blue, blue T5s, a lot of actinic light, blue LEDs, these things pop. They draw attention when you have them in your aquarium because they glow. And it's one of the reasons why we do very well with them. And, and uh, when the Florida Keys had a problem with Recordia's bleaching out, rock anemones didn't care. They still were there. And the divers that were collecting the Recordia's went from Recordia's to the rock anemones and it allowed them to continue to be in the industry collecting these beautiful animals for hobbyists like yourself. But for rock anemones, we like them so much, they're one of the easiest animals that we have here. You can put them in an aquarium and kind of just forget about them, but really not, and not have to worry about them because they're very, very, very hardy. Uh, so even though the ultras tend to command a little bit higher of a price tag, the hobbyist that wants to enjoy something that really glows and has a lot of high color contrast and isn't extremely expensive and pricey as say a rainbow chalice or something like that you can get those kind of colors in a beautiful little anemone that you can stick to a rock and in most cases will stay pretty much where you put it if you take the time to actually hold it where it needs to go and let it attach again rock anemones are fairly easy to take care of uh, if for perhaps when you know your LFS collects it for you you don't notice that there was a small tear in it or even you if you don't like where he happened to settle and you want to move him and accidentally you tear his foot, dip it in some iodine. Iodine is a great antibiotic. Um, as I've said in the past in previous videos, you know, it's not a coral, but it's an anemone. It is very similar to a coral. I still recommend that anybody purchasing anemones, corals, whatever it is, dip it, quarantine it, put it in your aquarium. A rock anemone, pretty much needs to be dipped in some iodine after it is purchased from a store just in case that tear happens that you don't see. Help to pre prevent any possible bacterial infections and the possible death of the beautiful little animal that you purchased. Then try to put it on the rock where you would like to have it stay and hope that it stays there. If you have to move it, be very careful when you're moving it that you don't tear its foot. And again, it still won't hurt for you after you do move it, just to give it a quick 15 minute iodine bath with some water from the aquarium. Make the water from the iodine look a little bit like tea. Uh, maybe not quite as dark as tea, I always say Arizona tea. That's kind of lighter in color. Works out very well for us. Um, it's what we've been doing for many years. And add it to your aquarium, put it in another spot that you might like and hope that it stays there. Uh, rock anemones again, one of the easiest type of anemones to put in your aquarium and also one of the most beautiful. Very few anemones have the kind of colors that a rock anemone does and the great thing is they come from right from the, right from the Caribbean here, um, actually all over the Caribbean. Some more abundant areas than others. We get most of ours from uh, the Florida Keys. Once again, my name is Chris Meckley from ACI Aquaculture. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this segment on rock anemones. Uh, if you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us an email. We'll gladly help you in any way, shape, or form. We hope you enjoyed this segment.